Most services can inject an instance regardless of its service lifetime with .NET dependency injection. However, a singleton instance is the odd one out as it can't inject a scoped instance directly. Stay tuned to find out why this is and how we can fix it. Remember to hit the subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash at the code to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our .NET 6 course on dependency injection, a must for software developers. Visit roundthecode.com slash courses. With dependency injection in ASP.NET Core, there is singleton scoped and transient service lifetimes. A singleton service lifetime has one instance for the application's lifetime. A scope service lifetime has an instance for the duration of the scope. An example of a scope is a HTTP request in an ASP.NET Core application. A transient service lifetime has a new instance every time it's injected. A scope service lifetime can inject all three instances of these service lifetime types. And it's a similar story with a transient service lifetime. Like Scoped, it can once again inject instances of all three of these service lifetimes. However, it's a different story with the singleton service lifetime. The singleton service lifetime has no problems injecting instances with either a singleton or transient service lifetime. But when it comes to a scope service lifetime, it's not able to inject an instance directly. So why can't a singleton instance inject a scoped? In a .NET application, there can be many scope service lifetime instances at any one time. An example of this is with an ASP.NET Core app. It creates a separate scope for each HTTP request and disposes of it when it has a response. As a result, the singleton service wouldn't know which scoped instance to inject and would therefore throw an exception. So when is this a problem? Entity Framework's default lifetime is scoped. Although it's possible to change the lifetime, there are many reasons to keep it as scoped, which we won't go into now. But by keeping it as scoped, it presents a problem for services that run with a singleton service lifetime. These include background tasks like a hosted service or using Signal R. To resolve this, we can explicitly create a scope for these services and dispose of it when we're finished. Let's see how we can go about doing this. For this, we've created a SQL Server database, and within that, we've created a table called Framework, which lists a load of frameworks. We've also created a worker service, and within that worker service, we've added a DB context that links to our SQL Server database. The DB context has a DB set of frameworks, this allows us to inject the DB context into the framework service, which means we can query all the frameworks and output them as the result. In the program, we've got the hosted service, which is a background service. This acts as a singleton service lifetime. We've also added a scope service lifetime for the framework service. In the worker service, because it's a background service, it's of course singleton, but we've injected the iFramework service directly into it. When we run it now, we're going to get this error saying cannot consume scope service. Now, in order to go about and fix that, what we can do is we can change this a little. So we now inject the iService provider. Now, in order to do that, we can go ahead and call the await modifier and call using, and we get the instance of, well, we create an instance of scope, and then we get the instance of the service provider and we can call create async scope. Now we need to get an instance of the framework service and we're going to store that as a local variable. So to do that, we get our scope instance and then we call the service provider. Now we can either call get service, which will return a null if it can't be injected or get required service, which will throw an exception. We're going to call get required service and we're going to add I framework service as the generic type. Now it's a simple case of getting all the frameworks by calling the method in the framework service. So we can call the framework.service and the method is get all frameworks async and we need to add await to it as it's asynchronous.
Now we're going to go through and loop through each framework and we're going to output it to the log. So we call logger.log information and we're just going to get the framework name for it. If we go ahead and run that now, we can see all the frameworks are being outputted. Learn more about dependency injection in .NET with our online course. Go to roundthecode.com courses. Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.